Welcome, everybody. Thank you for investing your time in listening to our story. I hope that it will be interesting for you, that you will enjoy. So, my name is Milena, and uh, myself and uh, my colleague Dan will present you the challenges of testing IoT systems and complex devices. And our story begins. First, the buzzword Internet of Things. I guess all of you know what is the Internet of Things. Some of you, but in general, it's like all the hardware devices connected and communicating with each other and communicating with some backend system. And also, uh, they are collecting a lot of data, which can be used in multiple purposes. So most of the examples you already know, smart homes, smart cars, it can be used also in traffic, in smart watering systems. So basically it has become all around us. But the question is why now? Because idea of having a lot of hardware devices communicating with each other, wireless, has been around for almost 100 years from the days of Nikola Tesla. Two conditions have been fulfilled today. First of all, is the hardware that is needed to upgrade one hardware device to go online is nowadays very cheap. And the IPv6 protocol has a lot of free IP addresses that you can assign every atom on the world in the, in, on the earth with the IP address and have enough free IP addresses for 10 Earths like that. So everything you see around you can become IoT device that comes online. So now the testing of it. My colleague Dan will start a little bit the introduction and then we will, we will dig in deeper in the story. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> uh, well, uh, from Milena's story, now you can all assume that testing this type of environment is very complex. So the main question arises how to test all this, how to test uh, different types of the devices, different communication protocols and applications who use all those data and information. And probably all want the answer for that. <laughs> so how many of you heard about contrast-driven testing? Okay, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you, you all heard about, you all know who is James Bach. So James, James Bach and other, other guys, Kim Khan and others, uh, came up with this idea in, 19, uh, in late of 19th, in 18th century, at the end of 18th century. A day, a day, uh, the essence of continuous unit testing is the, our knowledge, our experience, our skills not test procedures, not test standards. So when we talk about uh, our knowledge, it, we, we try to accum accumulate it and to, to exercise it throughout the project. Of course, uh, the, uh, the team members, the other team members are also the important part of that. So cooperation with other team members, uh, our, our other stakeholders, they give us the, the, the core value of the conscious driven approach. Uh, also, uh, as I said, uh, we don't have uh, test standards. We don't have uh, uh, test procedures. We allow, uh, we allow uh, ourselves uh, to do test practices, uh, which in base are our, our knowledge and our skill. So test practices uh, are always re-evaluated re throughout the project because uh, projects usually during, uh, during some period of time uh, are, change, are changing. So our test practices has also has to change throughout the project. So that's uh, the, main, uh, the main core, the test practices, which are always reevaluated re throughout the project. And at the end, uh, our role as a QA is not just to provide information about the quality of the product, it's also to, to provide the information about uh, the purpose of the product, the value of the product. Is this value or, and purpose of the product, is, it is uh, fulfilled. So when we talk about uh, test approaches, uh, we, all, we have to uh, see a product as a solution. Is a product solving some problem? The context of the product. Uh, so 
I will try to explain on this example. You see the two different products. Uh, they're, both of these products are used in healthcare to measure some uh, body parameters, for example, uh, heart rate, uh, blood pressure, and etc. But the context of those two products is much different. Uh, second product is used in hospitals, and our life depends on it. But the first product you all know is a smartwatch, everyday use. So test approach for those two product, products will be much different. Test procedure will be also much different because, for example, on the second product, uh, our accent will be on testing security because this device is con uh, connected to the cloud. It receives data of, for example, the dose of drugs which can uh, input in, 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 one in the patient. So we have to be aware of the standards that this product has to be fulfilled and also the security issues. Because uh, I put this product on purpose. This product was hacked in America by hackers. And uh, they had to put all the device all offline because uh, for Japanese, for the patients, for the drugs overdose. That is only one example. For this first de device, of course, functionality, usability is the main concern when you, go, when you talk about testing. Uh, so you see the different test approaches and test practices. For example, test, test approach for the first product will not be uh, useful for the second product and vice versa. So we have to be aware of the product, what we are testing, not how we are testing. So that is the basic value of the context-driven approach. It gives us the mindset to be aware of the product overall, not just the, its functionality, but also its purpose. So uh, how we conduct context-driven testing in the practice? Uh, I said that uh, the core of context-driven testing is our knowledge, our skills, our experience. Uh, so we like to call ourselves X-shaped testers. We, uh, we can only uh, possess the knowledge of how to test certain things for, uh, regarding the different uh, testing procedures, different testing techniques, and etc. But also, uh, we have to possess different skills regarding the communication skills, soft skills, organizational skills, because uh, someone yesterday on the workshop mentioned that QA is like a tissue. It connects different parts of the organization, not just developers and QA team, but also developers and the uh, uh, stakeholders, management, and our clients. So uh, you, you have to know those skills and you also have to know how to provide information because the, the, the main results of our work is information that we provide to our, uh, to our stakeholders. And we also have to put those information in context. For example, when I write a test report for my stakeholder managers, I will not try uh, uh, test report with providing the information regarding the, which type of uh, testing we were using, uh, the technical data, etc. I will try, I will start test report with the end results. If the software release is production ready or not production ready. What are the concerns? What are the good things? What are the bad things? What are the critical, uh, critical issues that we found? Because uh, those, the information that stakeholders uh, uh, expecting from us. But for example, when, when I'm writing the test report for the technical team, then I will start with it, first with the technical data. So I always put the information in the context uh, to whom I send those information, because the information has a value. And we are the one who has to provide that, that value. Also, complementary team, we don't know everything. <laughs> so the cooperation with other team members is the most important thing, not just inside of the QA team, but outside of, outside of the team. In our organization, communication with the development team in cooperation is on a really high level because they understand the importance of the QA and usually we help them, them for example, when they have to define some features, they have to define how, to, uh, how certain features uh, have the func uh, functionality of that feature and also the usability and everything. And also uh, uh, they, they give us the information of how to uh, sometimes to best test certain things. So this cooperation is very on a high level and uh, it's the most important thing as, as also with our stakeholders regarding the requirement because we always need an information. So that information has to be provided in all, in all that areas. I mentioned the practices. We don't have, we have a stra test strategy, we have test plans, but it's, on the start, it's, on, it's only the starting point for us. We are mostly all ally on our, on our practices.
because we, we have our product and uh, when we deliver our product to different clients, we have projects. And some project lasts for two weeks, some project lasts for, for three months. So test practices which we uh, go in those different projects, it's, it's different. And sometimes we have to change it. We have to be agile, to be, to be adapt. So we don't have best practices, we only have good practices, which are always revaluated. Uh, we are mostly focused on exploratory testing, which is organized in sessions. For example, we have a, we have a test plan, and uh, the test coverage is usually around 80 to 90 percent. But from our experience, most of, of the bugs which we found in our solution, we found during exploratory testing. So uh, we started, okay, when we're testing the new features, we start with the test plan, we write test cases, but we also write test ideas, like notes. And we have sessions for, which, which last for 20 minutes or till the half an hour. And those, during this time, we're just testing the, focusing on just testing the functionality at the end of the session. Uh, if we found new, new test cases, we wrote it in our test plan. We are, we are adjusting it. And uh, for, for now, that, <laughs> that gives us the, the best results. And also, we like to role play. Milena, she will talk about our solution, but uh, uh, our product is used for different type of users, uh, kids, adults, uh, uh, services, ma maintenance services. So we have to, when we test our solution, we have to put in the mindset of the users to know how to test and to know where, where, the, where the bugs are, where the issues are. So uh, more of our product, our solution, how we test in practice, Milena shall talk about it. Thank you. So our product is a smart vending machine as a part of one big IoT system. So when comparing to smart home as an IT system, this is very more challenging because on the, one, on the one side in smart home, you have just light bulb and here you have vending machine. So uh, the vending machine inside has a PC which is connected to the internet. So it's online all the time. It has a software application, sales application with a big touch screen for the interaction for the users. It has software for facial recognition, for uh, demographic profiling. Also, all of the information regarding the status of hardware inside the machine, of every sensor, of every uh, payment device, everything is communicated to the software, to that PC, which is then being transferred on the uh, IoT hub and then to some backend system. All of those data is being uh, used to build a smart a recommendation to build business recommendation after that at the end we are looking at smart retail solution and in general the architecture looks something like this so the thing here is vending machine which communicates through IoT gateway uh, IoT integration hub to enterprise application and centralized data management system and it is bidirectional communication so now you have an idea what challenges can we, can we experience here. And one of the points from Dan's uh, previous slide was why we call ourselves the X-shaped uh, testers. Because we have to dig in in all of those parts. So how we do it? First, when we started, because the testing was a part uh, of this solution from the beginning while it was being defined. Uh, we were also part of an R&D process, like defining which PC we are going to use for our software for the machine. So we needed to test uh, like performance testing and heating and all kinds of other tests that we needed to conduct on several different PCs inside the machine to see how it will react uh, to heating with the power of supplies with everything. And also when we introduce some new payment devices that some clients want, we also need to do some testing to see how it behaves. So it's not only software related. And regarding that, we have hardware dependency when we do our tests, because something from the best practices, what we learned is when we find bug, uh, we, at the beginning, we spend a lot of time looking at you know, where the bug is in the software, and then we just open the door and see that 
cabling was wrong or sensor was out, uh, not working sensor itself. So, so this hardware dependency is very, very important for us. So when we start testing, we need to make sure that everything is in perfect order inside the machine. Uh, regarding limited resources, because those pieces have limited power, then we have to monitor while our application is running the CPU consumption and also the heating of the PC itself. And in some, uh, because facial recognition software is offline and it needs a lot of uh, power, or a lot of RAM, and then sometimes it can just be too high consumption, CPU consumption. So we need to take care of that and monitor that also. Regarding the network interruptions, since it is an IoT system, you presume there is always internet because without internet, you don't have internet of things. But in the real world, it's not always like that. Our machines are in different places. It can be in metros, underground, and we are using mostly the mobile network, like 3G, 4G, which sometimes can be not so reliable. So somewhere on over underground, there is no connectivity or there is very poor connectivity. Or what we also faced in production is when the train comes, like thousands of people get out of the train and then the network is down for a few minutes or 10 minutes or so. So also what we need to consider during testing is that the network connectivity can be lost in every moment during 24 hours of machine operating, which means all the operations that are done on the machine, uh, like doing, the, while doing a purchase, while machine is doing some uh, downloading, uh, while it's sending some information, while the remote command from the backend is being sent, and a lot of uh, different scenarios that we need to think about, but we should always think about what if network is lost at that moment. So there are like thousands of, of, of scenarios for that. Regarding different types of users, also, here we have three levels of users. First one is the user of the vending machine itself, which is on the street. So who are the, those users and what are their needs? It's like people who are hungry and who are thirsty, who want to get a snack, who are late for the train. So we have to have transaction, which is very fast. It needs to be simple because a lot of people maybe are not that into exploring some new stuff. They need just one button and that's it. So we need to think how they will use it. Some kids, they just want to play around. So we also play around with the machine a lot. Uh, another type are the people who are maintaining the machines. So they just open the door, fill in the chocolates. They just need a few numbers, a few codes to enter close the door and they go. They don't care about the software. But we need to handle also those users. So our system has to continue working after that. And also maintenance application for uh, some sensor not working, they need to enter some mode, maintenance mode to see, okay, this sensor, let me check, okay, it's not working, call somebody, exchange this device and so on. So we also need to provide simple, fast information to them. Third part, uh, third uh, uh, type of users are the users of the backend system. The people who sit in the office and who monitor all the machines. So they have information about all the transactions, all the events inside the machines, if hardware is correct, uh, if payment is done correctly. Uh, then we have a business type of people who also in the backend system want to see the reports, want to see the sales. Like what's the sneaker sales this month? on this street, in this part of the city, on this part of, of country. So we also need to think about their needs, the, if they can get correct data. So can you imagine the, the amount of filters that you can use on the backend system and to verify all the information are correct? At the end, the security, security issues regarding the vending machine itself, it's standalone on the street. So like, what can you do? It has a security glass, but anyhow, people are trying to do a lot of stuff on the streets, like 
even some customers said that uh, they tried to, to fire the touch screen. They pour water, they put gums inside, so they like, yeah, trying to damage the system itself. Even one customer told us an uh, interesting story, like uh, when their uh, refillers came to refill the machine, they opened the door, they found a cat. <laughs> And they were like thinking, what's happening? And then they saw the cat jump on plates on the products. And she plays around with her, with her claws, making sounds, amusing herself. While she's doing that, the products are falling down. So they can just pick up the free products and go. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, if we were testing, it should look like something like this. <laughs> but we haven't tried it. So, to make this more real, this story, one of the degradation scenarios from my, <laughs> it was one of my first degradation scenarios. What if some coin is stuck inside? <laughs> How should I simulate that? So, this is the coin device. It has two parts. First part is coin acceptor, which accepts and recognizes which coin it is. And then the other part is coin dispenser, which uh, sorts in tubes coins and can dispense change. So I put the paper in between those two devices, so the coin cannot go further to the dispenser. It stays in acceptor, and then the device itself sends some information to the software, coin jam in acceptance or so. This was why, uh, my approach from the beginning, and uh, I get uh, weird looks from developers like, why are you doing that? What are you doing? And I said, we need to make sure that our software knows how to cope with everything because it is going to be 24 hours on the street unattended. It needs to keep running, it needs to be reliable. So when they made, a, of course, the, the software crashed first time I tried that because they didn't even cover that scenario, didn't thought about it. But then as months uh, passed by, it became more reliable because I tried more <laughs> stuff. And then when we had like first uh, week uh, uh, in production, I was very proud to see coin jam in acceptance several times <laughs> in some machines. And then I was really, I mean, the whole team appreciated then. And then we really get uh, the, play, the high place in our, the whole organization, the company. So like for, for our colleagues, like we are gods, <laughs> which is very good. So, some more examples, yeah, <laughs> this, is <laughs> this is yours. Yeah, this is uh, role-playing, I'm playing Leonardo DiCaprio in front of the machine. <laughs> uh, uh, as I mentioned, our machine is used by different type of users, children, adults, different age, different gender. So, uh, we have, of course, facial recognition system who detects uh, people in front of the machine and it sends data regarding the day age uh, and day gender to the cloud. So, as you can expect, we don't have children who are working in our organization, so we ha sometimes have to improvise. So, that is why we are using big pictures. On the second example, we have a scenario when the product is jammed in the machine, when it, when it is not delivered. Uh, we put the tape on the sensor, so machine thinks that the door is closed, but you can see it's opened, so we can play with it. So I will just start with the video. Sorry. And now the test case, product not delivered. Okay, right now I will add one product on the shopping cart. Add the product on the shopping cart and, and pay, with, pay coins. with coins. It's simple. And then I will catch the product before it is delivered in the tray. And it's a real product. But date is expired. So. As you can see, uh, the product is filled, it's not delivered. Yeah, product is not delivered. And it's a part of the act. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Don't try it at home, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So from our story, uh, you can see that uh, we have lots of challenges uh, testing uh, complex IT solutions. Uh, in our case, uh, uh, complex vending uh, IT solutions in the retail industry is uh, really a challenge because when you talk about uh, standardization, testing standardization, there is none. So testing is still in its infancy. And for us, it's cool, it's good, because it gives us the, the opportunity to find out the good test practices which we can use. So maybe in the future, those test practices will become standard. We will see. But uh, regarding the, the ideas and the open question, that we have in the future, and the answer for that, we still have now. For example, uh, testing scope. Uh, our main challenge today and in the future will be scalability, because uh, in the production, when you have in the production, when you have uh, two thousand or three thousand machines with different combination of software, hardware, firmware, operating system, how to test all this? I mentioned that right now our testing coverage is about eighty to ninety percent. In the future, it will not be like that. So uh, we will talk about it mostly during, uh, during our work and possible, po possible solution for that is to monitor how users use our machine in production in the future. For example, which type of combination of hardware, software, and operating system will be used. And regarding that, to make our test scope more influential, to cover all the test coverage and also to cover all the bugs. Uh, Milena mentioned uh, issues regarding the connectivity. For us, that is the main concern and challenge in the future because uh, our machine uh, runs on different networks, a mobile network, Wi-Fi, Ethernet. So we have to test all this. We have to test all different conditions. For example, when the machine is in the metro or where it is in the open air or in some building. So we have to simulate all this. and. We are a small organization and <laughs> we don't have resources for that. So we have to improvise. And also we, we have to come up in the future how to improvise the, this, the, these things, especially when we would have 3,000 3, or 4,000 machines. And at the end, uh, test automation, which is the most important thing for us. Uh, uh, our developers, of course, create unit tests for our solutions. But when we're talking about integration, test, and testing UI, uh, we just uh, scratch the surface. Uh, right now, we are working on proof of concept. We try to automate sanity test and smoke test and to become part of our delivery pipeline. So uh, I can say right now, it's really a challenge because uh, the querying, for example, one element on the vending UI is not the same like uh, searching for element on, the, on the, our application, the cloud. And you have, you, you have to possess different test harnesses for that. And for now, cost-benefit analysis is, 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 not, is not good for, not, for, for us in a matter of time and the cost is really high. So we have to make a better solution for that. Uh, uh, we try to, as I mentioned, to write the, to automate a smoke test. We are using annually test framework for now, but hopefully in the future we'll come up with something else. But uh, okay, uh, uh, test automation for our software is one thing, but uh, how to automate human interaction? For example, when you insert the coin in the machine or when you're tapping the card, it's really difficult. We, we know that there are robots who can simulate coin insertion, but as I mentioned, they are they are, uh, we are a small organization, so they are really expensive. So, so sometimes we have to, <laughs> to, simul ex accepting, uh, to simulate different things. And I will show you one short video. Uh, this video shows uh, how we simulate uh, credit card payment, or exactly how, to, how we all automate credit card payment. We really improvised because we used, uh, uh, it's a solution from our colleague, Canvas, really elegant solution. We use uh, uh, three devices, Raspberry Pi, uh, photo sensor, and uh, one little motor, uh, and credit card is uh, taped 
to the motor and photo sensor is taped to the cashless device. So when the user put uh, the product in the basket, uh, cashless device, uh, it just blinks. Photo cell detects and gives the command to the motor to change position. So you just tap the, uh, tap the card on the cashless and remove it. So yeah, improvisation. <laughs> yeah. So we we'll show you our story, and we can usually we can talk about it for one day because we have a lot of experiences. But I, I hope that uh, in the simplest way we try to share the challenges and the ideas of how to test certain things. This is an example of how to test uh, complex IoT solutions. But many of this, these practices can be used in your solution, of course. So we hope that you will come up with some great ideas, not just to uh, uh, to follow the test standards, but also to come up with your own ideas on your own test practices and how to implement in the pro your projects. Yeah, and also we hope to get some new ideas from you also. Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you for questions.